Hello everyone, it's Poofy. Welcome back to Dirty Split. I think I have figured out on how to get the autograph. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk to Lola. Hello again. Hello, Mr. Baxter. Hello, Lola, you're cute. Uh Could autograph, please. Autograph? I'd love to. Because she is to Chi Chi, please. Chi Chi. Because she is giving me that there. Here you go. And now See you later. We need to make it legit. So what if we show this to uh, and what about Rosalie? Our little She's penthouse Madame. lady. Madame. What's her Is name again, Madame Thoreau? Because that might actually work. Can you can we talk to you? Would you sign something for me, please? There we go. That's Would you sign something for me, please? What exactly? Um a written statement. A written statement for your testimony. Oh, well, of course. Done. Thank you. Thank you for now. All right. That works. So let's see if this is actually legit enough. And if Chi Chi will, will buy it. I was looking at... Chi Chi to the Rainbow Motel. I got this. Here, an autograph by Madame Ferro herself. Oh, it's her! Madame Ferro's handwriting, my goddess! With a personal dedication to me? How on earth did you get this, darling? I'm afraid that'll stay a secret between Madame Ferro and myself. Oh, you cheeky monkey. How can I ever repay you? A massage, maybe? What? Uh... How about the key to Lloyd's room? Why, certainly, darling. Anything for you, here. Thanks. And you're sure you don't want a massage? Yeah, pretty sure. Pretty sure does kisses, though. <laughs> All right. Let's go and check out this room. There must be something in there. Huh, what is that? Looks like a piece of paper that's been ripped off somewhere. Pick it up. That's a page from the brochure of Dr. Bedford's practice. It oh. has the practice's address and phone number on it. Interesting. This must be the missing page from Madame Ferro's brochure. Why would Dr. Bedford rip pages out of his own brochure in order to call himself? This just doesn't make any sense. No, because it's not him. What is going on here? The suitcase of our Mr. Lloyd is still lying on the bed. Apparently, he left in a hurry, or only intended to be a short trip. Is there anything else that we can... Can we pick it up? If it was Dr. Bedford who posed as Mr. Lloyd, then he won't mind any more if I have a look inside. What have we here? Plane tickets from New York to Las Vegas, used two weeks ago. And a return ticket to New York, which is dated for next week. Hmm, business cards. Issued to Giorgio Castafiore, owner-manager of the Vava Voom Bar in New York City. I wonder what Dr. Bedford was doing in New York, and what is his connection to this Castafiore guy? I should fly to New York and follow the lead to the Vava Voom Bar. Oh, there's more here. A writing pad with the motel's own paper. I'll take that, too. Hmm, nothing important left in the suitcase. All right, so we got a new lead. Shall we check that out? Let's go to the airport. Uh, to the airport? And then we're going to... I better have a look at this Vava Voom bar in New York then. Exactly. Maybe there I'll find out what Bedford's deep, <coughs> dark secret was. All the way to New York. Oh, we conveniently are in front of Fava Voom Bar. She's talented and scantily clad. A winning combination. Uh -huh. What is this? The picture shows two men. The one on the right looks like Dr. Bedford without his glasses. The caption reads, Joey and Uncle Johnny, 1958. Uncle Johnny? Uncle Johnny? He doesn't seem very talkative. Oh, maybe he will talk to us. Hello. 
Hello. Watch your poison. Martini, Bloody Mary. I'm not here for the drinks. I have a few questions. <laughs> Do you know a Dr. Christopher Bedford? Never heard of him. Are you sure? I don't remember every patron's name. And people don't exactly wear name tags around here. Our patrons don't talk much anyway. You might want to take a leaf out of their books. Do you know a Giorgio Castafiore? Joe, of course I know. What's your connection to him? He's the owner of the Va Va Boom. I'm the barkeeper at the Va Va Boom. <laughs> you do the math. I have to go. Well, do you know this guy? Do you recognize this man? <laughs> That's Joe. Joe? Joe Castafiore? He owns this bar? Are you sure? Take another look. Mister, of course I'm sure. You what? see the photo over there on the wall? That's Joe. What do you want from him anyway? It's about a matter in a police investigation. I can't divulge any details at this point. What? That is weird. Sometimes I... Uh... Excuse me? Let's, let's see if there's any... No. Yeah, that doesn't work. Of course not. How is... I have no idea. Here's some firecrackers. Hokum. No. Is there anything else that we can... Ooh. Do you know these business cards? Those are Joe's. Okay. Hulk. Hokum. Sometimes I feel... Wait, what if... That notepad, right? Let's use an old trick. If you rub it with a pencil... Right. I'll use my uh -huh. to rub over the pad. There. Now the writing should be legible. What is... This is a writing pad from the Rainbow Motel. Yeah. Exactly the same kind of paper that I, I know, found but in Dr. Bedford's what's practice. on it? Someone jotted something down here. Mix C. 169316. I wonder what that means. I doubt she'll be of any help. What's more, I'd have to deal with an angry mob if I interrupted her performance now. Yeah. The gentlemen are entranced by the young lady's performance. I have an idea, by the way. Can we go back to the airport? Oh. Yeah, it's me, Leo. That cop just came around here. Joe's dead. Pretty sure, yeah. He had a photo of Joe with him. It looked like he'd been iced. Yeah, I'll do that. What? What was that about? To the airport. I'm not done here. Are you sure? I'll have to find out more about this Giorgio Castafiore. Okay, let's see if we can do. If we can call uh, Sam. I'll only call Mrs. Vanderbilt when I know more. No, Sam. Okay. What are you to call Sam though? But so, what was that about? Hello. Hey. Hmm. When was the last time you saw Mr. Castafiore? I haven't seen him in a while. Which is not unusual, seeing as Joe's hardly ever around anyway. Doesn't he have to take care of the bar? Sex sells. Business takes care of itself and not half-naked girls dancing around. Where can Joe usually be found? He travels a lot. Never know where. Listen, it's not my job to monitor his life. That's what he's got a wife for. Oh? Do you know where I can find Mrs. Castafiore? Oh, over in Jersey. Newark, I think. I have to go. Can we go there? Yeah? Why is there a hydrant Somebody here? made quite a mess here. Probably kids from the neighborhood who wanted to cool down a little. I already took a shower this morning. <laughs> okay. The industrial area starts right behind the Castafiore's house. Either the Vavavum bar doesn't generate enough money for them to move elsewhere, or the Castafiore's have a soft spot for the background noise and the picturesque view. The mail slot's barely big enough for a newspaper. A sturdy door with a mail slot. There are dull noises and a weak flicker of light coming from inside. Somebody must be home. Alright. 
Or the house possessed, yeah. A sturdy door with Ding dong. Yeah, what is it? Hello, Mrs. Castafiore. My name is Baxter. So, what do you want? I'm here because of your husband. Joe, what's he done now? There's no easy way to say this. I have reason to believe your husband is dead. Pfft, nonsense. Nothing knocks that old bastard over. And you're not kidding me that easily. You need to come up with something better than that. Now scram. What a brutally honest young lady. And so polite. What? Yeah, what is it? I assure you that your husband is dead, Mrs. Costafiore. That's why I'm here. To ask you a couple of... Pshaw! Don't even start. Joe ain't dead. You'll have to prove it. I'll believe it when I see it. Oh, I, I have it. Beat it! What? Can we use the picture? Hey, what's this all about? I don't want your stinking flyers. You can shove that where the sun don't shine. Look closer at the picture, Mrs. Costafiore. Joe? I is that Joe? That's right. That's your husband. The police took this photo post-mortem. So it is true. The old fool did get himself killed after all. I have a couple of questions, if that's okay with you. Aw, oh, it doesn't matter now, anyway. Come in. The TV guide for the next few weeks. I doubt it's better than the last one. Or that it'll ever be better. <laughs> Makes sense. The ashtray is overflowing with cigarettes. The cabinet is slightly bleached from the sun. It's some player from the Yankees. The picture even has his autograph on it. Yeah, Joe is nuts about all this baseball crap. How can anyone stand that stuff without being drunk? I've never heard a woman swear so much. There's much more where that came from. You don't seem to be too bothered by your husband's death. Aw, oh, you know, basically, it's no surprise to me, and I've seen it coming for a long time. I just didn't think I'd learn about it this way. From a complete stranger. What do you mean you've seen it coming? Joe's as hot-headed as they come. The moron often got himself into the hugest messes. Most of the time, he'd barely managed to get out of them. This time, he apparently didn't. I always told him to keep his fingers off all this monkey business. You think he'd listen to me? What monkey business? Well, that's hardly a secret around here in this neighborhood. Joe takes on an assignment now and again from Uncle Johnny. So it's a family business then? Family? Heh. You could put it that way. Uncle Johnny ain't really Joey's uncle, of course. But they're all a part of the same honorable family. Does that mean your husband was entangled in mafia activity? Well, not exactly entangled. He used to run an errand here and there for Uncle Johnny. Good money. But nobody pays that kind of money if the work ain't dangerous somehow. So I tell him, Joey, I say, Joey, don't you see this ain't gonna work forever? And he just walks right out of here, that damn good-for-nothing stubborn fool. What kind of errands? Uncle Johnny. It's kind of a big shot over in New York. Belongs to some group of investors who put a pile of money on a couple of casinos down in Nevada. And Joe was something of a courier. Every couple of months, he'd fly to Las Vegas to collect the casino's earnings. Always without attracting attention, so no one would get suspicious and greedy. He said he'd always store the money in a locker at the airport when he was there. Totally inconspicuous. A locker at the airport, huh? So has anyone ever gotten greedy? You bet. Not just once. Joe just can't shut his big yappa. He even got himself shot one time because some guy wanted to grab the money for himself. The damn fool. It all caught up with him after all. I told him. I told him a thousand times. He just shrugged me off, the bastard. Mm hmm When was the last time you saw your husband? A couple of weeks ago. Maybe a month. Listen, I don't know exactly. It's not important to me anymore. The bastard had a different girl in every city and had been that way for a long time. Then why did you marry him? Good question. I can hardly remember myself what it was that attracted me to him in the first place. I should have listened to my mother. She always told me I deserved someone better. Do you know a Dr. Christopher Bedford? Nah. Should I? Dr. Bedford looks like the spitting image of your husband. 
Do you know if Joe might have had a brother? Nah. None that I know of. And I'm certain that no one from Joe's family has ever seen a college from the inside. Could it be that Joe led a double life? Maybe his real name wasn't even Giorgio Castafiore. Listen, mister. Just what are you trying to insinuate? Joe may be a scumbag, but he is and still remains Joe. If you want proof, look over there in the cabinet. All of Joe's papers are in there. I have to go. I'll see you later. Yeah, yeah. Alright, so let me try something. If I do this... Oh my god. Uh... Yes. So let's try again. Haha! -ha! I think that worked. Nice. Grocery list, newspaper clippings, a diploma from a manicure studio. Aha! There's a birth certificate. Sure enough, Joe really is Joe. Or rather, Giorgio Antonio Castafiore. This is interesting. Joe had a twin brother. Identical, in fact. The twin brother's name isn't mentioned on here. But I bet his name today is Christopher Bedford. And I bet he's alive and kicking, too. Interesting. So she mentioned something about a locker in an airport, right? If the murder victim isn't Bedford, but his twin brother Joe, then I need to find Bedford. I'm afraid it would take the police too long to track him down. Hmm. Mrs. Costafiore mentioned a locker in Las Vegas that Joe frequently used. Maybe I'll find out more there. I have a hunch that this will take me to Bedford. And we're flying back to Las Vegas. <laughs> nice. And it's dark again. So what what was the there was a code on here, right? Three one six nine three six one. So one six nine. One of these lockers must be Joe Costafiore's, but I don't know which one. And even if I knew, I'd still need the combination. You, you know, man, it's this one. No, that doesn't work like that. Ah, uh, do I have to look at it again? This is a writing pad from the... Exactly. Someone jotted something yeah. down here. Mix C. One, six, nine. Six, nine, three, one, six. Wait a minute. Joe's wife said he always had a locker at the airport when he was in Vegas. Mix C. That could stand for McCarran Airport. Meaning 169 could be the number of the locker. And the rest is the combination. Mm-hmm. Number 169. This is it. What do we have here? An empty bag. There are some dollar bills left in it. Looks like someone was in a hurry. There's more. A newspaper from two weeks ago. That must be Joe's travel literature which he left here. A baseball magazine and a few full of scantily clad women. Yep, definitely Joe Castafiore's. What's this? A travel catalog. Quite heavy. Somehow, this seems out of place. I wonder if someone else put it here. Let's see. Joe was assigned to take the money from the casinos to New York. But he never got around to doing that. And now he never will. It was in Dr. Bedford's office that I found the piece of paper with the locker combination on it. Or what was left of it. And now Joe's dead, and the money's gone. I'm getting the impression that the good doctor isn't so clean after all. Anyway, I need to find out where he is. Exactly. But well, we're going to do that next time. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, follow, leave a like, a comment, and most importantly, tell your parents about me. And I personally cannot wait to see you again next time. Bye-bye.